Let's do an example of calculating the Fourier transform, or the discrete Fourier transform, in the Sage Math Cloud Server. So the discrete Fourier transform, as we know, should be written as you take a set of uh, data, f sub r, and then you want to turn it into some amplitudes, f hat sub n, um, when you expand the data in terms of complex exponentials, as we have here. And our job, our goal, is to compute the f hat sub n's. Uh, if you do that by hand, it's a real pain in the butt. But Sage can do this with a quick algorithm called the Fast Fourier Transform. And so this video is going to be about seeing how we do that. Uh, so first, let's talk about the data. I've already preloaded some data. Uh, and the data is given as a list of x coordinates and the value of the function. And so I have this array where I have an x value and the function value, or the, the data value. So the data looks something like this. Um, it's a pain to look at. Let's not look at it, actually. Um, let me instead just ask Sage how long this data set is, and it's 128 pieces long. OK, great. Um, maybe we can plot it. So let's list plot it. Let's list plot our data and see what it looks like. We list plot our data. OK, here are 128 points on an axis. And so for each point that has an x value and a function value. And it looks roughly like it's um, sinusoidal. It has some oscillations oscillating back and forth, but it's not just one sign. So there's a couple of frequencies in this oscillation, and we need to figure out what those frequencies are. OK, so uh, in order to do the fast Fourier transform in Sage, um, we need to create something called an FFT object. Um, and so an FFT object, well, first we have to define the size uh, are the number of data points that we have. This would we call big N, but I'm going to not call it big N in Sage just so things don't get ugly. Um, let me do that in a new place here. So 128. And so then we say that we want to create a new array called FFT, which has 128 slots in it for doing the Fourier transform. And do that, and it spits out 128 spots. Um, let's actually call this something else. Let's call this FFT sub data. So as opposed to our data, now this is going to be where we put the data for our fast Fourier transform. Okay. Uh, and so that FFT sub data now is uh, something that contains 128 empty slots for our data. Um, one thing I did want to point out is that this data here, 128 slots, it has a spot for a real part and an imaginary part. For some reason, this is the way that Sage likes to do it. It likes to separate the real and imaginary in this way. OK, so now we have an empty array for our data. The next thing we want to do is we want to populate this array uh, with our data. And so everywhere that we put, see here's our first slot, we want to put the real data that we have in where the real part should go right here uh, and then same thing for the next oops same thing for the next slot and the next slot and the next slot and so on we want to put all of our 128 pieces of data in here um, and so the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a loop and so we'll say for you know, let's scooch down um, so let's say for j in the range of our amounts of data. Let's do a loop. And let's say FFT data. And the jth piece in FFT data is equal to, well, our data, we want the jth piece. And we don't want the x value. We want the value of the function, the actual data piece there. If you had put a zero here instead, it would give you all the x coordinates of each of the 128 um, pieces of data. We want the value of the function, uh, and so we put a one. OK, so now let's run this. And it just, of course, doesn't show us anything. It doesn't return anything, because um, it did all the calculations in the background. So let's look at the data now. Let's do a plot of it. So we can see what we've got. 
OK. And so here is our data now, our ready to do a fast Fourier transform for point 0.1 uh, at, at 0. We have a data point at 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So at every integer now, we have a data point. And so we have all of the f sub n's here. Um, and that's really important that we have all of the f sub n's, because when we do a Fourier transform, we need to have f0, f1, f2, etc. We don't want their x values associated with it. OK, good. So now we have all of our data imported into our uh, FFT object in Sage. And actually, that's mostly the hard part in Sage. Um, once you have all of that in there, the way you do a Fourier transform in data or in uh, Sage of your data is you just say FFT data, and now you say I want to do a forward transform of that data, and then it will forward transform that data. The way Sage does this is it replaces everything, all of your previous data, with now the Fourier transformed of the data. Uh, so let's just see what we've got now. Let's see um, FFT data, oops, and let's look at its plot. Okay, so that's not particularly useful. It's rather colorful, but it's not particularly useful. Um, and one of the problems that we have here is that Sage is giving us both the real and imaginary parts here, and our data, our FFT data, is actually complex. Um, and so we, uh, we're we seeing that complex numbers, and we don't really want to see the complex numbers. We want to look at the absolute value of the overall amplitude. Um, and so we're going to have to take the absolute value of the overall amplitude. Um, a couple other things is that uh, the x-axis here is an integer, the integer value for the FFT data, uh, corresponds to n, but we don't want n. We want um, the frequency associated with that particular amplitude. So we're going to need to change both of these things in Sage. And so in order to do that, we need to take the absolute value of our data, and we need to turn the horizontal axis into an angular frequency. So for any given n integer, we want to convert that into a p. OK, so we're going to do this with a loop. Um, and also, I think we need to remember that delta x is 2 pi over the size for our delta x values. OK, and so let's now do a, uh, uh, let's create a new array, actually, before we do anything else. Call it FFT frequency. So this is going to be an array that actually is going to contain our, the same amount of data, the same data, but we're going to take the absolute value and its x coordinates are going to be frequency, not integer number. So let's say 4k in range size divided by 2. A nice thing about fast Fourier transforms is you only need half of the data from the fast Fourier transform. The other half of the data are actually copies, um, the complex conjugate of uh, your other pieces of data as long as you're trying to Fourier transform something real. And so we just need size divided by 2. We don't need the whole bit of data. Okay, So that's going to be an empty array uh, called FFT frequency. Um, and now let's populate that array. And so the FFT frequency, the jth piece, the x-coordinate, uh, we want to be the angular frequency. And so it's going to be j times 2 pi divided by uh, size times delta x. OK. And then the jth piece, the y-coordinate, is going to be the absolute value of our data. And so to take the absolute value, I need to tell Sage to consider that data, FFT data, to be a vector and take its absolute value. OK, so that will then do those two operations that I want to do. Uh, once we've done that, we can now plot our amplitude spectrum. So let's list pot, plot this thing that I now called 
FFT freak, uh, the frequency spectrum in the amplitude frequency spectrum of our data. And so here we see those data points, and again, we only have half of them. Um, so it seems that I have a spike somewhere around two, four, six, something a little bit past six, um, and something that looks like it's around 10. Um, okay, now uh, remember also that we don't, uh, we don't need all of the 128 points. These are actually the frequencies, not necessarily integers. So each of these numbers doesn't necessarily fall on an integer. Um, okay, so let's just, in order to interpret this a little bit better, let me make some modifications to it. And I'm going to add uh, some features like plot joined is true to join all of our data together and then label the axes. And when we do that, okay, so now we see amplitude versus angular frequency. We see we have a spike somewhere around six and spike somewhere around 10. The original data that I used to generate the data file was actually the sum of two sine waves, one of which was uh, had an angular frequency of two pi, the other one had an angular frequency of 10. And you can see that actually matches pretty well with what we're getting from our FFT. It's telling us the two frequencies that made up our data. So that's the general idea of how to use SAGE to do a fast Fourier transform um, and uh, how to interpret that data in terms of frequency.